What's cracking, guys? Thanks for tuning in to yet again another Honda recap. This is episode 10. Video 10, recap 10, I don't know, but we've made it 10 of them. Let's get this going. What's going on, guys? Thanks again, like I said, to another episode of the Honda Recap. If this is your first time, make sure you hit that subscribe and hit that bell so you are notified when this comes out Monday nights at eight o'clock. This is crazy, we've gone on 10 episodes, so I, I just wanted again, I'm just gonna go ahead and start this off with a giant thank you for everybody that comes back, who enjoys this, who you know hits me up either in the comments or DMs on Instagram, and are just like, dude, I love what you're doing, thank you for doing this, you know, it's awesome what you're doing for the community, and I'm um, just like, that's that's all I really wanted to do, you know, give back to the community some way that I knew that I could and um, also be able to be me, which is sit in front of a computer and consume all this content that you guys are creating as much as the content that I am also trying to give out um, with this and, and my own builds and my own life and stuff like that. So thank you guys for also watching that stuff. I, I cannot thank you enough. And uh, the channel's growing and the recap is growing. And so just, God, I can't thank you guys enough. So, without talking too much, let's get right into it. So, we're going to go ahead and kick this off with Adam Ivel 621 This guy's been working on his EG for a really long time, but not his fault. He's had tons of other projects. He's drifting now, but like me, he's also trying to build a motor this year, but learn a lot more about what he's doing. He's got his buddy Pete. He's got other friends that come out to the shop to kind of show him what to do. But I think Adam's just getting impatient with maybe waiting for other people and just being held up by his own boundaries. So he's jumping in, he painted his block, he's trying to do as much other stuff as he can. He's getting uh, OEM parts so he can build up that B16A2, I believe it is, and he's gonna throw it in the EG. He's getting closer and closer and closer by the month, and I'm super, super excited. I really do hope he actually makes it to the Nürburgring with Danny and all the other guys that are going. Um, but I love to see the progress, you know what I mean? Even if it takes a lot of swear words and a lot of throwing things, you're definitely making progress, man. And like, that that's all we could hope for, right? And soon enough, that Red EG is just gonna be so quick and, and you're gonna have that pride because you know you put everything you could into it and it's gonna turn out exactly how you want. And then once you actually see that, you know what? You didn't care about the fresh paint job and all the other stuff that you put into it, it was meant to be on the track, man, and you're, you're gonna see that really soon. So I, I love that you just keep putting in work yourself, and uh, it's awesome watching your frustration turn into happiness at the same time, so I don't know, man. Um, I'm really glad that you continue to build that car, and I'm glad that you decided to keep that one over the blue one. Uh, you know, it's, it's gonna be great, dude, so keep it up. Next up, I had a lot of time to think about whether or not I wanted to talk about this guy on YouTube or I wanted to talk to him on Instagram. And I know he's way more pronounced on Instagram than he is on YouTube, but he does have a YouTube page and I did stumble upon it as well. And he had a cool video about him and his EK and what went into making that and that is Works JDM. He's much more active on Instagram stories and on posts and, and everywhere else, but I really enjoyed the fact that he did have a YouTube channel. There's a really well put together video of everything that went behind the EK build, you know, between the K swap and I think the supercharger and, you know, the NA tune and the supercharged tune and all the other work that he's put into it. Um, it was really cool to see him talk about himself and how he went about it and all his progress and stuff. So. If you haven't, you know, seen too much about the guy and you want to learn more, uh, I suggest go ahead and check out the video. I'll link it below just like everybody else in the past and everybody I'll talk about today. All their information will be down below in the description. But if you've ever wondered, you know, like I said, what, what's gone on behind the build, this is a really great video to get up to speed with what exactly it took to get to where he is now. And uh, I'd love to see more footage like this and maybe see more on the YouTube channel because Instagram doesn't give you enough, you know, and uh, you have so much knowledge and all this stuff with Action Clutch and everything else that you've put into the community. I think video and more than one minute gives us a little bit more insight to behind you, man. So hopefully you throw up a couple more videos on YouTube, maybe turn that back on. Otherwise, make sure to follow WorksJDM on Instagram where he's mainly active. 
All right, back up to the recap, we got Boosted Boys. Not that Kyle hasn't done anything worth talking about. You know, the Boosted Minivan, the Odyssey of Sorts, uh, which is just making gods, gobs and gobs and gobs of power. But he's now helping build his friend's uh, EM1 clone, I guess we could call it. Uh, it's definitely gonna be a cool B-Series build. They already have the motor out of the car. Um, they're gonna paint it, you know, kind of shave it, not to really, but just make sure we clean it up. And then it's most likely gonna be a really clean eBay build. Uh, just cheap, running, keep it going, keep it running. And I think that's all he really wants to do. But for the most part, they're gonna start building it already. It's starting to come apart. Like I said, they painted the engine bay and it's gonna be a little different because it is the first B-Series build that's going down on the channel. They've done plenty of H's, uh, turboed many of things, but this is the first B-Series build, which is kind of crazy, and I'm super juiced about that, you know, because uh, they've done D-Series, H-Series, and somehow completely skipped uh, B-Series, but now they're doing it, and it's going to go into an awesome chassis, and uh, it's, uh, it's amazing owners. If you haven't done that, check out Boosted Boys and see all the progress that's going to come out with that car. All right, Season 6 of Honda Street Garage. Season 6, is that like six years, dude? Like, have we been watching content that long? That's that's crazy. And to have season six, six years, if that's the actual case, there's so many videos you've put out. I think season five closed out with 82 episodes last year. I may have that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. And so much happened, you know, two or three different cars, endless amounts of motors, and Mark's back at it again, you know? Season six started, we're on episode two. Uh, literally starting it out with a wagon, uh, it's not his, but he's basically pulling a D-Series out of one and a B-20 out of another, swapping the engines to either car, um, and then moving on. But like I said, we're only on episode two and the guy's done two motor swaps and, and out of a wagon, you know, that's, that's awesome. So, I mean, I just wanna say props to you, man, and uh, I'm glad that you just started off with a bang. I know you got a lot of stuff planned this year. I know I got a lot of uh, excitement, ready to see what's going on. I know you got new wheels for your car. I can't wait to see those get put on, smashing around. And uh, I love the look of your car, man. And I just can't wait to see what knowledge you want to drop on us this year and what random project gets dropped in front of you that we get to watch you build on. Next up, we got Refined Movement. They drop weekly episodes as they build up the Z6 Track EG that they have going on. And if you've been following along, they worked with Action Clutch to actually get a really good clutch combo for the car. Stage three pressure plate and a stage one clutch because he wanted to be able to drive to the track and drive home will be able to get enough force on the clutch to handle the track day so it was a really great combination he's been showing you how he's going about doing that and i believe the motor is finally together in one piece as in transmission and motor together and it's on his way going into the car uh, i really enjoyed actually the last video that he made because in the same video that he unboxed a bunch of new hard race parts the clutch and a bunch of other things he did actually go all the way to the junkyard to, to find some last little bits and that's really cool because you know well, you see a lot of people putting tons and tons of money into their car, which is completely fine, and I love seeing that, and I know you do too. It's really great to see people just go into the pick and pull and just pulling parts that they need, you know? And it's just like, you can totally still do that. The parts are great. You put a little cleaner on it, you get it up to the way you really want it, and they're perfectly functional. So I really enjoy the fact that we opened up brand new parts, and later on in the video, you're right back at it at the pick and pull. Props to you, dude. I, I love seeing that kind of stuff. This next guy we've talked about in the past too, it's Royce Natividad. He has a FA5 that he put Demon Eyes in, and I believe he had a bunch of other mods he was basically doing to that. But 2018, he started with a new car. It's uh, EK Coupe, and he's getting it ready for the track. I think I discussed this in the past, but recently he got a new racing seat getting ready, and he also put new front brakes on his car. He's trying to dial everything in. I actually had some conversations with him. He wanted to go B-swap, he wanted all to do all this stuff, but he also mentioned he wanted to go to the track. And honestly, my best advice for him was like, just if the motor runs, just see what he can do with the track. You learn way more driving your car on the track with whatever you have brakes engine power and then really figuring out okay i need more power i need more brakes and you know you can save a lot of money that way because you spend a lot of money swapping your cars for all the parts you need to go from a d to a b and then you go to the track and it's like oh, i don't know what i'm doing so you might as well learn how fast your car is now and then slowly improve so i'm super juiced that that's actually what he's doing He's installing his new front brakes, he's installing his seat, he's getting ready for this year's track season, which has already started, so I really wanna see what's going on. I see all these builds and preps going on, so I'm really happy that you're building your car, man. 
if you're going to put the same attention to detail that you put into your FA5, you're going to be good. And I'm super excited to see it in person. Hopefully I can do that very soon. Coming up next, we got Vasile's Garage. I talk about this guy a lot in the recast, but it's also because I'm really excited about his project and he's putting in tons of work. Um, the left-hand drive firewall is now out. He's putting in the right-hand drive one and he's showing you how to do that. It's, it's insane to see all the work that he's doing. I know I, know I bring it up almost every time, but I, I, can't, I can't talk about it anymore and he's definitely making huge progress on the car. So if this is the only way you hear about it or maybe the YouTube videos that he puts out, uh, kind of on a weekly basis, check him out on Instagram. He's always doing live, and I think he's doing live a lot more, which is pretty nuts. Maybe you should just do live on YouTube, man. Like, it's just it's a lot of effort that you're putting in. I'm not going to lie. The car is going to turn out great. It, it started as a running car. It is now a complete frame with no firewall, going right-hand drive, K-Series coming in the future. It's, it's insane, and you are doing it all yourself in a garage with just normal tools, you know? So that is inspiring to me and a lot of other people, I'm sure. So keep it up, man. I, I literally will report on it all the time because like, it's just, it's gonna turn out so good. <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, but I know it's gonna turn out so good to everyone else who's watching it. And um, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm super supportive of what you're doing. Last but not least, I wanna give a crazy big shout out to Young Static, AKA Grown Static. Just kidding, I heard you might wanna change his name. Don't do it, man. But I mean, I don't know, Grown Static. I don't know, you're, you know, you're older now. Anyways. One of the hardest working guys on YouTube, um, ever since year nine when he went to SoCal and he, uh, he met up with a bunch of other YouTubers, he's come back and put out videos every single day. He used to put them out almost every day, but now they are every single day. And the work you're putting in, dude, it's insane. I know um, I've talked to you, you know, over text and stuff like that, but man, like you're putting in a lot of work and I want people to kind of see that. Um, the work you've done in the past week on the CRX getting ready for drag season and then not being able to finish but going to help your friend instead and then literally coming back and putting in more work. Your knowledge of the EF chassis is incredible with all the wiring that you've done, the engines, and then going ahead and just pulling the motor to put in a new clutch and then throwing it back in and it's all, it only takes you like a week, seven, eight days and I don't know, man. I can't give you a big enough props, and uh, I hope everyone else realizes how much effort you're putting into that car, along with every other car and customer cars that you do help out, because everybody knows, like, man, this guy knows what he's doing. So, I don't know. I just wanted, uh, you know, for me, to you, and from everybody, to, like, give you props, man, for all the work that you put in. Every video is, is, is long and detailed, and just, like, I don't know, man. You got 24 hours in a day, man, and you're using 48 of them, so... So I just wanted to say, all the work that you're putting in doesn't go unnoticed, man. It's it's tons of work and everything you do is turning out great. All right, guys, that concludes YouTube. I just wanted to update on a lot of other channels that are doing stuff. I'm still, you know, on the hunt for new ones, so always make sure every week I'll have some one or two new channels I want to talk about. But a lot of stuff's been going on in the past week, and I wanted to kind of cover over some of the old channels that I've talked about to keep everybody up to speed. So with that said, let's start Instagram. There's so many accounts. I mean, it's obvious, it's Instagram, right? There's so many accounts. But, you know, I got a close knit of people that I follow, so I wanna make sure that they get props and just make sure that I cover what they're going on or some people that I think just, you know, maybe they need a little bit more love. Either way, let's go ahead and kick this off. First off, I wanna kick this off with Eric ITER, ITR basically. He's got a 2000 ITR track car and a 98 ITR daily driver. Obviously this man is a big fan of the DC2 chassis. He has two of them. One is track prepped to the max. The other one is also very well taken care of and his daily driver. Just seems like a really great guy and two awesome great cars and so it's really cool to see him share the passion for both of them and just never gets tired of driving that car. So I mean I, I'd love to see every picture that he has and I'd love to see more of your track car man. Next up we got 98 CTR. This is a beautifully put together white EG CTR on lime, greens, R, lime green RPF ones. Uh, he's got a lot of pictures out on the track. It's really cool. I think he also has a couple other friends that have awesome cars as well. I just want to give this guy props because I just love the contrast of his car, the white on green, and just because of the fact that it's a track prepped EG, I can't get enough of those. And you're always, you know, going around to different tracks. I believe you were out there at Road America. And I want to see how far out you want to go track this year as well. So looking forward to more pictures, man. And uh, so I want to know what you got planned for your car next. 
Next up, not so much a car, but a person. I want to give a big ups to Graham Downey. He's a big driver that's out here in the Bay Area. I actually met him a long time ago, randomly on a walk. Uh, I was taking a walk for my old work and I went by this garage and I looked through the window and there was like two EGs up on racks and like a couple B-Series motors around everywhere. And it wasn't exactly like a place you would see a garage because it was like downtown in like a tech area. But I was like, well, this is strange. Um, and then one day I had my Del Sol and I took it in and he definitely helped me out. I had some weird issues going on after uh, I put the turbo in and he kind of helped me out. And then years later, I, I saw him with Black Tracks in Fremont where their location was. And I was like, hey man, that's you. Um, but he's an awesome driver, father, go-kart enthusiast, anything with four wheels and uh, that goes fast. This guy is all about it. He's also, I think, the uh, the driver, aka the Stig for Tune and Drive, that got started from Jay Black Tracks and Graham Downey driving a bunch of cars. Basically, they uh, review cars and the drivers and the builders, and they take them to local tracks, and Graham smashes around the track and uh, sees the best times he can get on them. It's a really great concept. I'll definitely cover it in the future. Um, I think the move of Black Tracks kind of slowed that down, but it's definitely an awesome channel to check out. Speaking of Black Tracks, I also want to give a big ups to Jay from Black Tracks, an awesome tuner, owner, enthusiast of the Honda world, you know? Like, I've known the guy for quite a while. He's definitely tuned my car, and uh, they've definitely helped the community out as well. I think he's also getting into drifting a little bit, not him personally, but helping drifters and tuning their cars and things like that. They actually moved from Milpitas to a different location in Fremont, and I'm, I'm super happy about that because they get a little bit more room and a fresh start, and they're still doing exactly what they do, and that's just helping the Honda community and other communities as well. But he's also, Jay, that is, is building his S2000. I believe he's getting a cage put in now. He just got a putty mod rear diff that he's going to put in, and uh, I'm really juiced to see him go around the track as well, because I know he used to be really big into drag racing in the past, him and his wife. Uh, so it's just, you know, it's a whole family of uh, car enthusiasts, and uh, I want to give, you know, a big props to Black Tracks and UJ and all the help you've given me and everybody else, and uh, I'm super excited to see uh, what you have planned this year for your show. All right, another account that I want to get to is EK Hatch Four Door. This guy is actually making a uh, sedan into a hatchback. It's kind of a weird thing. You've seen a couple of them, and I've seen a few of them. I haven't seen one in person yet, but people are basically taking their four door EK hatches, taking out the rear window and the trunk, and slapping on um, a hatch. And uh, that's really cool. Uh, you get both, obviously, just from a functionality standpoint, you get four doors and a hatch, which is really cool, which is like what the new Hondas and the new SIs are actually doing a little bit. But it's really great to see the body lines of the EK sedan of the mid 2000s with a hatchback and pretty custom because not many people are doing that. Obviously, they never um, offered that. And a lot of the work that gets uh, a lot of the work that you have to put into it is pretty unique. So I'm really excited. I'm really watching your uh, profile. I want to see what you got coming and uh, post up more, dude, because I don't think too many people are doing it and you're doing it yourself, I think. So there's a lot of effort and a lot of engineering that you have to have to that you actually have to put into that. So uh, I'm super excited for you, dude, and I, I hope more people will watch what you're doing. All right, last but not least, we got CLGE8. I met this guy probably almost about last year. I got a call from one of my friends, Jose, and he's like, you should come and hang out with the True Fit crew, and we're going to go out and take a drive and then have like a barbecue. So I hella did it. I drove all the way out to Sacramento, maybe. I, I don't actually remember where we drove to, but it was a long time with like 20 or 30 fits. And some of these guys came from a long distance. This guy, CLG8, has a Mugen RS GE8 fit. He drove down from Canada all the way for this. He met up with us and we all drove and it's one of the coolest fits I've seen. And uh, I know a lot of people don't really give the fit much love, but they should. The first gen was an awesome car. And if you actually want to put power into the car, there's a lot of random things that uh, you have to do to that car. I actually have a two-parter segment really early on in my channel where I sat down with Tyler and he kind of explained a lot of stuff you have to do to make the fit have a lot of power. And there's like a bunch of fits that actually track their car. So, I mean, props to you guys. It's definitely one of those chassis where it's um, undervalued. But anyways, to the point, CLGE8, it's a white fit Mugen RS, um, complete, JDM swap. He drove it all the way down from Canada. Really, really, really cool guy in a unique car. And uh, I love seeing it in person and I love seeing all the pictures he posts. And I don't know what else he can do to his car because it looks super clean and super finished to me. But like, you know, like most cars, nothing's ever finished. So check him out if you haven't. If you're a fan of Fitz, 
make sure to hit up his account and just say what up dude it's a really cool car to check out and i was really happy to meet him coming all the way down from canada all right guys that about wraps up this week's honda recap like i said early on i really thank everybody who's you know giving me support and has come back every week uh, we will be back next week i'm trying to make this thing a little better so if you have anything i can do to improve this let me know i want to help out anybody that i can help out local guys that are building stuff you know like i know there's guys out there like ube made and jb tuned and all these guys that i feel like are building stuff with their hands in their homes and aren't huge but i want to support everybody that i can so if anybody would love to get you know their stuff in front of the camera or in front of more eyes let me know i personally am not asking for anything nothing free um, I just, you know, like if you got something in your building and you want some support for it, let me know, man. I'd love to talk to you about it. I'd love to learn a bit, a lot more about the product that you're making or your ideas and just kind of have a discussion and maybe get it in front of more eyes. You know, I want to help the community as much as possible. Um, the aftermarket scene is getting crazy, but there's still people out there that are hand building stuff in their garage and trying to start something grassroots. And I really, really support that. So kind of want to throw that out there. If anybody has anything they're working on, let me know, you know, I mean, if, uh, if I can get behind it and we can talk, I'd love to get it in front of more eyes. With that said, guys, thanks again. Go ahead and wrap this up. Look out next week. Trying to find a lot more channels to talk about a lot more people. Let's have a discussion down in the comment section. Say what's up. What do you like? What are you looking to see? And what do you plan on doing to your car this year? Peace, guys.